Good morning! I'm with Sri here Hi. in the new Volvo XC90. He just brought me the car and uh, put his channel down there. Subscribe to him as well. He's gonna do some English videos, some Tamil videos, some nice stuff. And he, did, he is a award-winning professional uh, photographer. So uh, if you need any tips and all that, ask him in his channel. He might, he might just do a video and reply you, right? I uh, just got back from Mehong San, driving the Mercedes E53 AMG for, for, for four days straight and uh, that car's engine is just brilliant. The chassis is brilliant, the engine is brilliant, uh, the gearbox sometimes good, sometimes don't know what it's doing, uh, but that, that's part of its character anyway. And uh, once, after I got, in, got back into this, this test car, this, this Volvo, I'm like, okay, the materials in the Volvo is way 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 better than that of uh, the E-Class you know by far let me explain now you, you've all heard of soft touch material right so in the Volvo you can touch the dashboard it's all soft touch material even on the doors you have the, the leather and all that when you go into an E-Class, you also see leather everywhere, but it's actually a very thin layer of leather over what is actually hard plastics behind. So, when you press on the leather, there's only so far, the moment you start touching on it, it's already hard. So, anyway, small complaints. Fuck off, Elmera. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. And, uh... Lovely morning drive, and uh, let's see how the new XC90 does later. Why don't you puke in the car? Sorry? Hope I don't puke in the car. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy driver, Volkswagen Club. Hey, Volkswagen you know. Club, you guys are all mad, but I respect you all. Like, I respect you all. You all, you all are fucking mad. And, and Thailand will love you all. Mei Hong Sun will love you all. Thai people's driving ethic is just so, so damn good. It, it makes you think this whole westernization thinking mm -hmm. in so-called modern countries like like Singapore, like Hong Kong, all this uh, where you talk about rights of individual rights, right? Okay. Where, yeah. oh, you shouldn't party at night because you make noise, I cannot sleep. Mm -hmm. You cannot celebrate your birthday mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Your visitors come, take mm -hmm. out the parking. We all inconvenient. This kind of western thinking mindset, right? Uh, uh. It's stupid when you are in Thailand. You you look at how Thai people take care of each other. Mm. They go out to uh, never mind, you know, let let help each other a bit. Mm. Right? That kind of mindset, right? It makes you think like that, you know. These countries who so called embrace the the Western mm. uh, individualism, mm. are they on the right path? When you look at how Thai people treat each other, how Thai drivers right. drive. You know, put two wheels in the grass to let you overtake on a mountain road just because they know uh, you might not, you might, yeah. you might get stuck yeah, behind. Correct, you know? yeah. Wow, I tell you, Thai people are just amazing. Anyway, enough of Thai stories. <laughs> I'm back here in Malaysia and uh, time to. Oh, Singaporean in front. Yeah, Singaporeans, if you're watching this, you all should learn. Go Thai, Thailand more often. Learn how to drive from Thai people. Uh, I'm not discounting Malaysians as well, but but uh, you know how Malaysians and Singaporeans are. Huh? One car follow you behind, then you you blow up already. <laughs> Why? Why blow up? In Thailand, oh, you tailgate me, you want to pass. Wow. Let me try my best. Put two wheels on the grass, <laughs> let you pass. Awesome. Yeah. If you think I'm over-exaggerating, just join Evo Drive to <laughs> Mihong Sam. I'll prove it to you. Alright? So this is the new XC90 and uh, I so far I don't feel it drives in any way different from my XC90. So I'm one of those uh, people who you buy the XC90, you buy the car and then a few months later the new one came. Yoohoo! You never thought a motoring journalist would would have that sort of luck, right? Okay, uh, let me explain a little bit. That time when I got that is to have the larger fuel tank, the larger battery capacity, and the leather dashboards. 
uh, everything, the new processors for the graphics card. And all those are in this car as well, apart from a different grille, different rims, different gear knob, and uh, another slightly larger battery as well. So that's it. But this one is now cheaper. What? Yes, it's lower price. I can't believe Volvo Malaysia uh, putting a lower price on a product that is so good and without competition. This car is now in a league of its own in terms of price and what you get. There's nothing like that in the market that can even come close to this at this price point. Well, and then they reduce the price anyway. So Volvo and Mazda Malaysia both are companies that uh, don't like huge margins. Now, you guys might think in the contrary because you all make noise about the Mazda 3, but most Mazda cars, they, they really have very low margins. Oh, very Lovely foggy morning. Though. Very, very foggy. So that. Okay, let's see how the car drives. Now, I've done multiple, multiple times in the XC90 on Gunting Runs, and uh, it is a big car, but it is agile. It is agile for its size, okay? I'm not comparing to a small sedan, but something this big that has such agility in comparison, uh, huh? it's really nice. If you ask me to compare this with an X5, there's little in it. I mean, I haven't driven the new X5 yet, but in terms of the old X5, there's little in between them. In fact, this one has the adaptive suspension, so this one might be slightly better in sports mode. Now, I can put into B, and I can see a plus minus there, but the plus minus is in left right so uh, I really do not know how to comprehend that okay let's let's try okay boom B4 okay B3 okay go leave it in B3 then 4000 RPM excuse a more beetle yes beetle that's how it will work corners Plus the gears, drag it again. I don't really feel the sensation of the gears being dragged because I'm scared that the Gunari just went in. <laughs> See, the XC90 handles really, really well. There's not even one time where the car just went un you know, like unsettled, clumsy and all that, it just does what you want it to do. The new SPA platform, maybe some people didn't mention it, the new SPA platform when they developed it, the test driver was a Carrera Cup champion. I forgot his name now, but it is a professional racing driver honing the chassis. So, how bad can that be? Of course, like always, car reviewers, a lot of them look at brands, all right? They look at the Volvo logo, and then they got in the car and said, yeah, it doesn't drive exciting. What do you mean by exciting? And show me, don't just talk on the camera. Do something with it, and then prove it. Don't just go up, look at the brand, and say, oh, it doesn't drive exciting. <laughs> Fuck you, brats. <laughs> yeah. See, the tires are great, right? Yeah. It's a damp morning. The Michelin Latitude trees, right, are fantastic tires. But of course, you cannot throw it like how you throw so, your, your Passat, <laughs> right? Passat is a low car. Mm. So we see X5. Composed, right? The car is so composed that you dare to do things with it. 
and you can put the the front end where you want it to be because visibility is really good. Visibility is good. Yeah. Visibility is awesome. And you see, I'm, I'm still driving in a more safer manner because you don't hear the tire squeal just now. Right? I'm still like managing yes. it within its grip range. But there was one time I was driving this oh. one, I have to rush up to the thing oh. for every corner. <laughs> <laughs> Well, not on purpose, uh, and then, then someone on my own car. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quick cover. Such a nice car to drive. Awesome car, bro. Seriously. Yeah. And it's so big, and you get to do that, all that. So oh, that's why I always say that in terms of handling, it doesn't lose out to any big SUVs. In fact, it's, it's sharper to drive than the Range Rover Sport. Good morning folks, these are the two keys for these two cars, All right, one facelift, one pre-facelift. Um, as you can see it's brown colour on Volvos, if the leather on the key is brown, it's Napa leather mind you, that means the car is brown, the leather. Uh, you, if you spec the black leather, you will have black keys. All right. This is my own car, the pre-facelift XC90, but it's 2019 as well, that is the facelifted version that came out in October. I took delivery in March so let's go through the differences in the styling. As you can see the front bumper uh, is different but you have to um, pay attention to see where the differences are. It's, it's largely similar. Okay, The most obvious thing is the grille. Okay, you Look at that grille. That has the concave grille, grille design that is now in line with the S90 and uh, the, the other variants. Now that grille, that concave design actually harks back to the P1800. Okay, so this is the old grille and then let's go to the new one. You can see that it's more, it's basically nicer. You have the sculpture here and the way it reflects light. Um, and then these chrome bars in between gives it a very nice look especially when light you can see the light moving on the concave surfaces as I walk whereas this one is just plastic painted okay and then the lower bumper you see the same shape like that but then it extends all the way towards the end so see this one is just one little lip here painted silver and then here is just one chrome bar. Whereas the new one, you have the lip being more pronounced and then this thing extends all the way out and then there's a nice big chrome bit here. Basically, they added some bling to it. There are no changes with the headlamp or the front fenders or the bonnet line. Uh, most facelifts don't change that. And of course, the rims are different. Now both cars are fitted with Latitude Sport 3 as standard, but mine, due to review, I changed to the GT Sport S1. Uh, the GT Sport S1 is a okay tyre, half the price of this, almost half the price of this, and about 70% of its performance. So in terms of outright grip, outright wet weather and all that, the Latitude Sport 3 is still the champion. All right, And then as you come to the rear, so if you look at the rear, the uh, exhaust housing, these are real pipes, I mean as in the real pipes are inside. The exhaust housings are exactly the same, it's just that the new one has one chrome bar running all the way across the car. Makes the car look sleeker, more modern, more luxurious and wider. This one, just a little bit, a chrome bit here. That's the only difference between the pre-facelift and the facelift version. And of course, why did I get a 2019 version is because my previous 2017 version doesn't have 360 camera. That one doesn't have um, the leather stitch dashboard, doesn't have the leather stitch backrest, doesn't have the uh, larger fuel tank. The larger fuel tank is actually the main thing. Um, this one, the same as this, has 70 liters of fuel tank. And then battery-wise, this is now 
up to 11 point something. This is 10 point something. But my previous 2017 one is only 8 kilowatts. Okay. Let's open the doors of both cars. And you will see there is only one thing that is different between the two. And we're lucky that both are the same spec. White color, brown leather, and everything else is exactly the same. So you see the leather dashboard over here in the new one which is also present in mine, okay? The other thing would be, the new thing is this, the new shifter, okay? This is the new design from Auroforce, very, very good looking as well. And the benefit of this new shifter is that now when you shift to B, which is not indicated here, you can do plus minus, via this motion, left and right. I forgot which one is plus, which one is minus, but maybe left is minus, right is plus. Basically acting like a pedal shifter because the XC90 doesn't have pedal shifters. Okay? Then, uh, this one, however, you see the leather over here? Okay? And then this is the nice soft touch. Plastic. Volvo uses very, very high quality plastics in their cars. Okay, if you touch the back uh, portion of these seats, these are the really high quality, very nice to the touch kind of plastic. Okay, or injection mode PVC. Right, then you look at mine. At the backrest over here, mine is leather wrap. Look at that. This is leather wrap. Now, to be honest, this is Napa leather, this is not. Okay, this is a different type of leather. It's a, it feels slightly rougher than that, but it has that cushion, you know, really nice to the touch. But in terms of sensory, I don't think it's any any better than touching this. Okay, but these are minor complaints. Now look at the gear lever of the previous generation. You can't move left or right, but the B is indicated. So B means uh, it is it, it enters like a like a like the, the gear is always engaged to charge the car. Okay, but overall the entire car, the entire cabin, the door panels, the wood paneling, the Bowers and Wilkin sound system, everything remains the same as the previous one. Okay, uh, even the seat controls and all that. Let's go in depth into the new one and see what do you get with your money. You get a lot actually. Alright, let's come inside here. Start the car. That's how you start it. Alright, it's a familiar sound. And um, everything's the same. Another thing, why I got the 2019 version is because the uh, processor, the graphics processor of this head unit has been updated. So in the 2019 version, even not, not, the pre, not the facelift version, you already have the crisp and fast responding touchscreen. Compared to my 2017 version, uh, mine has a, a, a bit slow, okay? And uh, yeah, you can enable individual drive mode so that it appears when you press the drive mode, individual is here now. Alright, another thing that uh, some people may not know in Volvos, um, in terms of drive mode, you see brake, you can even change how the brake feels, right, you can change the dynamic, you know, brakes and all that, so just now we're doing some hard driving, that's why the fuel consumption is considerably higher than usual. But other than that, everything is exactly the same. High quality materials all around the car. Right? Lovely dashboard, leather stitch, clean interior, you know, unlike uh, some car makers put a lot of screens, very glaring and all that. So everything just feels the same. Alright, very, very nice. Yeah. Nice quality materials all around, beautiful Scandinavian design, clean design. Just nice, even the seats are extremely comfortable. Okay, <clears throat> let's see if I get the full. Yes, you can change the lumbar, you can change the cushion extension, you can change the side bolsters. Yeah, all these are available in the newer version. But mine also have the 2019 version. My 2017 version doesn't have that. The side bolsters. Okay, 
So uh, yeah, quality of buttons uh, and everything is so easy to use. You know, cruise con auto automatic cruise control. Just press this once and you're activated. This one, press right one more time. You add the lane keep assist, adjust the distance. That's it. You don't need a lot of stocks here and here and there. Activate rain wiper. Just press this once and then you are on. And then uh, you want your automatic headlamps, just toggle this once after you start your car. After you switch off your car, it will go back to auto, but it won't activate this. This one is the automatic high beam. Alright, and uh, opening the glove box is this button. Very nice touch to it. Very, very lovely. Frameless rear view mirrors. Everything is still there. Still, in terms of price, specs, it is still class leading, okay? There's no competition for this car in the Malaysian market because of the price, right? It's been a while I've done this. You get a very, very comfortable, very spacious sitting position, headroom. It's just an overall really lovely place to be in. Uh, of course, I, I would have been happy or sad if they added more USB ports in the car. There's only two. USB ports in the car, all right? Cup holders at the back, and uh, yeah, it's just a very nice place to be in. Very well built interior. You can go in and touch around. You can touch the entire car. You can't find a single portion of cheap plastics inside the car. Okay, it's just very very well built and quiet and rides nicely. Okay. And uh, some will be saying, oh, you, wouldn't it be good if it's a powered one? Powered one means they'll fail one day, right? So, uh, T8 twin engine. They call it twin engine because the architecture of the car is very different from the hybrid uh, powertrains of uh, BMWs and the likes, okay? Because in the X5, you have the engine there, you have the transmission tunnel with the uh, long shaft going all the way to the back and then for the four-wheel drive system all the mechanical four-wheel drive systems are there the battery is housed in the boot and then the electric motor is housed in between the engine and the uh, transmission that's in the x5 and most mercedes platform they're all like that but volvo went one step further is it is a very advanced platform uh, you have the engine and transmission in the engine bay powering the front wheels and then in the middle is the battery pack the entire battery pack is in the center con center tunnel there's no long shaft and then the back just the electric motors and the rear wheels powering the rear wheels and using uh, the communication between the, the motor and the front the electric motor and the front engine and both communicate and activate four-wheel drive while you're driving when needed okay a very well finished uh, thick carpet layering at the back here feels really good to the touch these are the only sort of uh, thinner plastics that you feel but it still has a very nice surfacing to it very high quality materials all round um, you get some hooks over here oops you get some hooks it's rated five kilos okay and then uh, you have this separator luggage separator Put it up here you can hang your shopping bags you can like if you buy a watermelon or something just wrap this around it so you won't roll around you put your shopping bags everything is well thought out except this thing okay this tonneau cover is built like any volvo stuff the whole thing is very heavy um <clears throat> to remove it one-handed is is a, a task or a chore for, for a chore for for ladies but after removing it if you need to drop the seats right after you remove it right you do not have a place to store it underneath here whatsoever if you look at the indentation here and the indentation here and the space available here you know that it is possible wait Bobo designed this for dual purpose okay see that it is possible to put the tonneau cover inside here if they leave an indentation over here, an opening here, this molding. You can put the whole tonneau cover across this whole part so that you can cover this and leave the tonneau cover inside. 
just like how Subaru does it. But Volvo did not design that in, which is uh, a pity. Okay, let's see if the spider is still there. Yes, the little spider is still there. Look at that, look at that little spider. Not many people pointed it out. Why? Because you need some form of grids to make the plastic strong anyway when you come to molding it. Why don't design it into a, plast a spider web with a little spider there so that when your kids sit at the back, when they put their stuff in, they'll be greeted by the lovely, friendly spider. Not something you want to be lovely with if you stay in Australia, right? Every spider there is trying to kill you. So yep, that's the interior of the XC90. Going into the back seats are dead easy. Just do that. Oops. It's new, never been slide before, I guess. Oops. Ah, oh, need a bit of housekeeping there. The carpets have run off. But basically going in and out is very, very easy. And a lot of people made the mistake after they push the seat up, they pull this lever to put it back down. Actually, you should push the base first, then only you put this back. Alright, that's how you do it. And the middle row are three seats, so you can move them individually. So this is like a true five-seater here, true two-seater here. Adults can sit at the back, so no problem at all. Alright, that's the new facelifted XC90. So it's now cheaper by 10,000 ringgit. You get the plus minus function, you get a new rim, you get a new grill, you get a new gear lever. That's about it. But it's more affordable. Yep. That's the comparison between the new, sorry, the new XC90 and the old one. Uh, when it comes to the drive, the one thing I notice is uh, when you go into force charge mode, that means when you activate using the engine to charge the battery, under that mode, the old one is louder than the new one. The new one is quieter. I hear less from the engine in the new one. So engine bay soundproofing has been improved, I suppose. In terms of drive, identical. Yep, that's about it. Thanks.